Hello good people, it's Rob Lee. I'm going to do a short video for you today and we're going to have another one of those moment of truths. In the past month I've been trying to do more powerful videos, more com more compelling videos and I only do what the Father moves me to do but I want to do a video today and I want to ask you a question, a very serious question, the type of question that most folks start, some folks start to ask themselves as they start to get older but it's very serious. Now before we get into the video, let me say just a word to you about the website, flockofjesus.com. Uh, I received an email from a brother named Nicholas. I received it yesterday, and I think he's a friend of somebody on the channel, either Shug or Tony, because both of them are from the UK, and he has volunteered to finish what Lyman started. When you're building a house, uh, people have to continue to lay brick, put on a roof, people have to add windows, you have to do what you have to do. And there have been some people that have offered to help, and I've prayed about it, and it's something that I feel like the Father has put this man in my life. Uh, this is the email that he sent me, and I sent him an email back, and if this is your friend Shug or Tony, and I'm sure that's one of you, please let me know, and we will go forward. And I hope to have the chat room on in the next couple days. The reason that it didn't get done so far is simply because I had some problems with Rumble Chat. Moving forward, if you have not seen my video about the fallen angels and the invasion of Western culture, please do so. It's a very good video. Also, the third woman of prophecy and born evil. And yes, some folks can be born evil. In fact, to understand that will help you to have freedom in this life. Also, in the future, I'm going to be doing a video. I've already started it called Drunk on the Wine of Babylon. And I hope that it will be a very compelling video and very moving and will help us to go forward. So let's get to it. Let's have a moment of truth. Let's let, let's go deep because I want to ask each and every one of you something. And I would like for it to challenge you to share it with somebody. You don't have to share the video, but I would like for you to ask them. No matter what reply that you get from them, I simply challenge you to ask one person what I'm going to ask you. Now, before I ask it, just let me read something to you. And I just want you to think about this. Our life is but a vapor. The life we live is but a fleeting vapor. The hope that we have in Jesus is eternal life. Our physical life on this earth is a short existence. You are here today, man, and gone tomorrow. And you can be walking along. You can be sleeping, breathing, eating, and that's it. That's it. You are done. That's it. You've taken your, your last breath. James 4.14, whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanisheth away. Now, I want to talk to you about when you die. I'm talking about the reality of when you die. And I want to have a moment of truth with you. I want to ask you something. Something that most folks never ask themselves. And they never care to ask other folks. It's a moment of truth. Now I want to talk about the real truth about dying. Not the BS that we're, that we're taught in churches. Not the Catholic dogma. Not the so-called Christian dogma that's been lied about. I'm talking about the truth about life after death. And what happens at death and that one question. Not the lies that you hear on YouTube about another Jesus, because that's what they do. They teach another Jesus. Not the, not the Jesus from the 1611 King James Bible, but another Jesus. Not about something about do you, when you die, do you go straight to hell? Because that's where most folks have, have many folks going. You go to fire, you go to hell, and your father's going to lock you up and burn you to death. Or have, so some folks have people going straight to heaven. And people teach this because they only they only parrot what the churches what the churches say, but then they want to say that they that they do something different. No, you don't. I, I I made a video called "When I Die: What Really Happens at Death," not the lies that some guy tells you on YouTube. This man died during surgery. He met God and asked him, "What's the meaning of it all?" Nobody's worthy to meet the Almighty Father, man. You see, because everybody's bypassing something, even you. I'm not talking about the lies about books upon books upon books that are on the Babylonian bestseller list. I'm not talking about the lies that Hollywood spits out day after day about life after death and Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about those endless movies and TV shows that tell you a lie. Uh, again, here's a guy, Mark Hitchcock, 55 answers about life after death. There's only one, man. There's just one. And have you asked yourself it lately? Or the countless TV shows and videos on YouTube about tell us your stories about your life after death experience because they want you talking to evil spirits. So when you take your last breath, man, when you are laid in the ground, and no, not everybody will die. 
the the Bible tells us that when Jesus Christ returns, there will be some folks alive, and they will be changed then. But you're still going to have to ask yourself one question. When the road's done, when it's all said and done, when it's over with, you see, when it, when it is really over with and reality sets in in a way that you can't even comprehend now, and you have to stand before your judge, and you have to be judged, you have to give an accounting of yourself, what will you say to Jesus Christ on that day? What will you say if tonight you went to bed and you did, you do not get up? What will you say if Jesus Christ calls you to him and say, why could you not give more to me? Why did you not give more to me? Why could you not sacrifice a little bit more to me? I'm asking you, what will you say to Jesus Christ on Judgment Day? What will you say? What about the people that you love? Have you ever asked them, what will you say? Because you are going to be judged. You are going to be held accountable. Folks don't like it, you see. Folks don't like talking about it because this is why there's been such a propaganda, such a propaganda mill by Babylon to make to make folks think that they can avoid judgment. Let me read something to you, and then we'll go further. John 6.44 here. It's Jesus Christ that will raise you, and Jesus Christ will judge you. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. This is Jesus. John 5.22. The Father made Jesus our judge. This is the truth. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, because Jesus Christ has all power. Matthew 28, 18. 2 Corinthians 5, 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Matthew 12, 36. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. So I'm going to ask you again, brothers and sisters, what would you say to Jesus Christ if you woke up in the next five minutes and realized you had died? And Jesus Christ calls you to him and he asked you, why could you not give a little more to me? Why could you not give a little bit more to me? And you start to maybe feel fear. Some folks may start to feel joy, but some, some folks start to feel fear. And they want to make excuses and they want to complain, but this happened and that happened and, and I never could get this right. And Jesus Christ tells you, stop. He pulls you close to him with love and honesty that you've never known before because you finally are standing before the Son of God and reality sets in, man. There is a real God. Jesus Christ is really the Son of God and it's time to give an accounting of yourself. Jesus Christ tells you, it was never about you, it was about him. He gave you what you needed to get through it. And he asked you again, why could you not give a little bit more to me? What was on this earth that was so important, so special that you could not give just a little bit more to, to me? Why could you not give a little bit more to the king of kings, to the one who loved you, to the one who died for you? Why could you not? You see, most folks cannot give more to Jesus Christ. And here's the, here's the reason why. Because they love this evil piece of dung world more than they could ever love Jesus Christ. Even though with their mouth they may profess, I love Jesus. Love, love me some Jesus. The truth is they love the world more than they love Jesus. Love of the world. The lust of, of, of this world. James 4.4 4, Ye adulterers and ye adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God, which means hatred. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. The enemy of God. Not his friend, the enemy. 1 John 2, 15 through 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof... But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Forever. You, you live forever. So again, I'll ask you. If Jesus Christ pulled you close to him, eye to eye, and you are before the Son of God and he asks you, whatever be your name, why could you not give me just a little bit more? What will you say to him? I mean, what would, what would you really say to him? 
I mean, have you ever thought about it? What would you say to the Son of God, the one who died for you, the one who sits at the right hand of God, the one that the Father gave all things and said, this is yours? What will you say to him on that day? Why could you not give a little bit more? Why could you not do just a little bit more? 1 John 4.17, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. You see, you can stand before Jesus Christ and feel bold and confident if every day, every second of your life is devoted to him. Why should you not? Why should you not? You should be expecting him to welcome you with open arms. For many folks, that's just not what it's going to be. And many of them are fooling themselves, and this is because the Father wants them fooled. I'll ask you again, brethren, what would you say to him? the most glorious of all names. Philippians 2.9, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, Jesus. How often does it even come out of your mouth? How often do you say the name Jesus? How often do you say his name? We will not get out. We will not sell out. We will not be talked out. And we will not be pushed out. We move forward. We do not bend trade and we cannot be bought we are the true followers of jesus christ we are the flock of jesus christ and we will follow him all the way even if it means death we will we will follow jesus christ to death and then we will have our reward and i'll ask you again brethren what would you say to him if you can stand before Jesus Christ and know that you've done everything that you can do to be the most loyal and devoted son and daughter to him, your hand has touched his hand. You have made it. If you look in the mirror and you know that you do that, if you pray to him, if you get on your knees, or if you pray to him and say, I give you all of me and you really believe it and it's true, you've made it. You are his. Do you really do that? Do you really do that? Because time is ticking. Tomorrow is not promised. The next minute is not promised. Do you do that? Have you given all of yourself to him? Is What is in this world that could be so appealing that you would, that you would want to give it anything above the Son of God? What's more important than Jesus Christ? May the Father bless each and every one of you. In the name of Jesus, amen.